There exists a plethora of different types of scientists and researchers in the universe of Resident Evil. From biologists to virologists, these experts in their field become best known for their work under the employment of the multinational industry powerhouse, the Umbrella Corporation, and specifically in their field of bioweapons, from their work on things such as the T-Virus and its many children to Los Plagas. But of these scientists, there exists one man whose creation stands as a goliath in the face of its competition, and this would be the prideful pharmaceutical prodigy partaking in private progenitor projects, Dr. William Birkin, the man who unearthed the horrifying G-Virus. Dr. William Birkin is one of the major antagonistic forces and inciting incidents for that of Resident Evil 2, along with being a background figure and responsible for quite a lot that takes place in the whole of the Resident Evil series. From his rivalry and friendship with the famous Albert Wesker that ultimately resulted in Wesker becoming as powerful as he is, to developing a lot of famous monsters found throughout the series when he took up head as the T-Virus project leader. Birkin might be one of the most important people to have ever worked for Umbrella, but due to the nature of his work and the prideful actions that he took in it, it ultimately led to him becoming the monster that he always was. Though before we get too into that, let's understand the origin of his name and design. Now, Birkin's human design throughout the whole of the series has remained basically the same in the majority of his appearances, with him being a relatively average-looking man with short blonde hair, except for in the very first game where he had brown hair, but so did Leon. He also looks a lot like a twist on Leon now that I mentioned him in design. At least to me, he's always looked like that. The one trait of him that becomes very apparent in the future entries is the bags under his eyes, which are apparent in Resident Evil Zero the most. Likely done in a way to show Birkin's almost tireless pursuit in his work, along with giving him a crazed expression even when he was human. As Wesker described, Birkin's pace was entirely unmatched by the other scientists that worked at Umbrella. He would stay at the lab 24-7, hammering away at anything and everything that he could get his hands on. And in the remake of Resident Evil 2, Birkin's design was specifically based off of a French model, David Marie. The name William Birkin has always been one that has stuck out to me at the same level as Albert Wesker. It just has a nice ring to it, I feel. Though the origins of the name aren't exactly clear, as it would seem that the family name of Birkin comes directly from the singer, songwriter, and model Jane Birkin, who was also famous for inspiring a line of luxury tote bags created by the fashion brand Hermes in 1984 called Birkin Bags. The Birkin name would also appear in series outside of Resident Evil, seemingly in reference to the characters in Resident Evil, specifically with Shigeki and Charlotte Birkin from the No More Heroes series, better known as Bad Man and Bad Girl. Now, the William part of his name doesn't seem to have any reference that I could find, though the meaning behind the name can partly play into his role in the whole of Resident Evil 2, as the name itself can mean Resolute Protector, or someone who will defend something with their life. William takes this meaning in a rather literal way, as he's willing to infect himself with the experimental G-Virus, specifically so he can prevent it from falling into the hands of those who betrayed him, and have his credit given to someone else. Which is a rather ironic fate given he did the exact same thing to Dr. Marcus and the T-Virus. Though William had already been working pretty closely with the T-Virus, creating some rather interesting B.O.W.s in his time at Umbrella before he isolated G, as he would work closely under the oversight of Dr. James Marcus, one of the founders of Umbrella and the first person to truly isolate the T-Virus genome. Though Birkin's involvement with the T-Virus cannot be understated, as he was a genius in the field of virology, graduating from college and earning a doctorate when he was only 15, though his ego wasn't entirely unfounded as his use of the T-Virus was revolutionary for Umbrella. He was essentially using it as an epoxy to splice different genes together. His first great discovery came when he mixed the T-Virus together with a recently collected Ebola virus, which while Ebola was only part of the research, the ideas raised in his experiments with it resulted in a strand of the T-Virus which could keep humans alive after death in an aggressive state, but ultimately they were brain damaged, which in turn created the zombies we know and love from the series. Though Birkin made more than just 
most simple zombies using the T-Virus. He was also responsible for the half-human, half-lizard hybrids known as the Hunter Alphas, which were created as a way of him both trying to impress the Heads of Umbrella as the new arrival of Alexa Ashford, a 10-year-old scientist and granddaughter of Edward Ashford, another one of Umbrella's founders, was a really big blow to William's ego and he wanted to prove himself, but also he did so as a specific way to address the 10% immunity rate in the human population to the T-Virus, and he achieved the Hunter's creation by splicing together reptilian DNA with a human egg, resulting in this terrifying affront to God. I guess you can kind of consider William's approach to science to be more art than science. Though the Hunters weren't the best B.O.W.s, mostly due to their limited brain capacity, they were useful as a last resort option, but ultimately resulted in them being labeled as unusable. Though William's work ethic and results had him be selected to take up the role as the head researcher of the T-Virus experiments when Dr. James Marcus was issued an assassination by Umbrella, as they grew concerned that he might uncover the secrets of the progenitor virus first. And in this role, William Birkin was delivered a sample of the newly acquired Nemesis Parasite from the European branch of Umbrella for testing, which thanks to his work on both the T-Virus and Nemesis led him to discover something much more grand. His greatest work of all, G, or more specifically, the Goliath Virus shortened to the G-Virus, as it was isolated by Birkin during his testing of the Nemesis Alpha Parasite on the progenitor virus test subject Lisa Trevor, who, when infected with the Nemesis Parasite, showed signs of not only being immune to it, but also dissolving and consuming the parasite itself, allowing Lisa to evolve tentacles and begin to develop mentally. Birkin was amazed by this discovery and re-examined Lisa to uncover the G-Mutation, which was a mutant strand of the progenitor virus which excelled in rapid, almost uncontrollable growth that kept the subject alive beyond death and able to evolve quickly and adapt to any environment. Birkin then began extensive work on the G-Virus itself, being given a new lab to work in called Ness, located not too far from the Arkley Mansion underneath an Umbrella testing site. He believed G would become far more powerful than anything the T-Virus could possibly create, and could even be a genetic revolution that could kickstart the next stage of humanity. Though due to G's ability to mutate mutate randomly without any form of stimuli meant Birkin needed to keep testing it before he could ever use it reliably. Thus, he took on double shifts at both the Arkley Research Base and the Nest Lab. He was a genius who was unmatched in his skills, making him an asset that Umbrella could not afford to lose. Which was likely why they provided him so much funding and research equipment for G, as most could see that the G-Virus was almost impossible to use in any effective way, so it's almost as if they were allowing him to work on the G-Virus, hoping that he would finish it, but also using it as a way to keep him working for them. Though soon, his past would return to haunt him, and so began his slow descent into madness. As well, reunited with his friend Wesker, William and Wesker had a familiar face from the past return from the dead. This being James Marcus, revived by his evolved T-Virus Leech Queen, Marcus released the T-Virus into the surrounding Arkley area, and attacked an Umbrella-owned train as a way to blow the lid on the entire business and all their shady dealings, and to get revenge for them killing and stealing his research. Though Birkin pulled the plug on everything, detonating the research lab self-destruct and returning to Nest. All the while, Wesker was mobilizing stars to infiltrate the Arkling Mansion, a separate research lab near the one that Birkin had just blown. Wesker was doing this in order to get test data for the Tyrant Project, also that he can jump ship from Umbrella. Birkin agreed with his sentiment and decided that he would finish up research on G before he would attempt to leave Umbrella himself. But he did offer his friend an alternative solution that would help him escape Umbrella, giving him something called the Prototype Virus, which was a test virus that would artificially kill Wesker before reviving him stronger than he ever was before. After this, Birkin returned to his lab in Nest, now armed with the knowledge of Marcus's return and the soon-to-be Arkley Mansion incident spelt disaster for Umbrella. He also caught wind that the higher-ups at Umbrella were very upset with the news of the Arkley testing site being destroyed, and now knew that there was a target on his back, since Wesker was now classified as KIA. Thus, he needed to finish G before he ended up like Marcus. So he continued his work on G tirelessly, and his pace increased so fast, actually, that Birkin was using and disposing of test subjects so fast that Nest couldn't dispose of them correctly, which in part was actually intentional. 
as Birkin was trying to create a biohazardous breach that would slowly leak out into the city around his testing facility, which would result in an epidemic of T-virus infections. And while they were busy cleaning up that mess, Birkin would sell off G to the United States military for asylum for him and his family, likely hoping that the government would allow him to continue G's progress as well. Though, history does tend to repeat itself as umbrella moles in the US military uncovered William's plan and deployed an umbrella security service squad to not only retrieve the G-Virus, but also William himself if they could. Though, in the encounter with Alpha Team, William was fatally shot due to his erratic behavior, and the team recovered G and left, leaving William to bleed out. But little did they know that Birkin still had a sample of the G-Virus in his possession. Now filled with rage and a desire for revenge, Birkin willingly injects himself with the G-Virus, beginning to quickly mutate into a G-Mutant. Immediately, Birkin's bullet wounds healed over, but soon, G's rapid mutation would take effect, turning William's injured right side into a grotesque mutation, as his muscle mass rapidly increased so fast that it tore his skin right open, and the bones in his right arm continued to grow until it ripped through the fingers and became massive claws. Along with this, G also generated a massive eyeball on the front shoulder of the mutant limb, though the reason for this is actually unclear, and it would seem that this was an example of how the G-Virus seems to randomly mutate in a way. Though, even though he was filled with rage, William seemed to be partly in control of this stage of his G growth, though he was subject to dizziness and needed to fight it off day and night to prevent G from destroying his brain. Though it is very clear that William sought out Alpha Team and then consumed the rest of the G-Virus samples so that no one else could have them. He also is seen protecting his daughter in this mutated state, though this could actually be the result of another aspect of the G-Mutant. But, in a way, him calling out to his daughter seems to be that there's still a little bit of Birkin left over during the stages. Though, when he consumed those G-Virus samples, he also released the T-Virus throughout the sewer system, resulting in a town-wide infection. And during the half of the week that it took for the town to get into full-on outbreak mode, Birkin wandered the sewers for food and reproduction vessels, which in turn resulted in G-Mutants living in the sewer systems itself. Though soon, Birkin would turn his eyes on his daughter Sherry, who the G-Mutation found as a fit vessel for its own parasite, so that it could reproduce and create a new more more perfect G-Mutant. And this likely came when Birkin would begin to lose his fight with the G-Virus's control, as he slowly found himself rapidly developing new limbs and body parts, resulting in the G2 evolution, as the growth has now resulted in the G-Virus creating its own new head and brain to replace the old one, moving the body lower into its biomass and growing a whole new extra left side to replace Birkin's originals. Though we would soon see another mutation occur when G2 becomes G3, the newly formed formed arms of G2 now move up the body into grotesque wing-like appendages, all while a new set of arms grow to replace them. Along with this, the faint signs of Birkin's original form has become nothing more than a face-like smudge on the imprint of the side of the beast. Along with this, the spiral of bones and teeth form a mouth-like ribcage on the front of the monster, and more massive eyeballs begin spawning all along its body, almost like biological mistakes. The G-Virus's rapid growth is becoming too much for Birkin to handle, but still shreds of his memory remain. Though soon, G3 would begin to evolve again, its massive body now becoming heavier and demanding more energy to function. Thus, it changed to become a massive, four-armed, bipedal beast, with a ribcage-like mouth fusing with the new head's mouth to become a massive maw that could consume anything directly in front of it. This is also where we see the G-Mutant become more beast-like in its movements and its actions. Interestingly enough, G4 is the stage in Birkin's boss fights that is the most changed from the original to the remake, as the original Resident Evil 2 had G4 be a direct result of overcoming G3's mutation, where in the remake 2, G4 is more so a stage between G3 and 5, even lacking the forearmed nature and showing more signs of being just an unstable mutation side effect. Though with this stage defeated, G again begins to rapidly evolve into its most unstable mutation becoming the nearly unstoppable G5. G5 is a form that is past the point of no return, becoming a shapeless biomass best described as a slithering mouth that consumes all in its path, its body spawning new parts in random places and growing massive tentacles to snatch and devour anything in its way. And at this stage, G5 can consume just about anything, including the decomposing bodies of the zombies, reusing their forms and adding on to its own mass. It could even begin to fuse with inorganic matter, 
like when it latches onto the only train heading out of Hive, but it would finally be completely destroyed when the train detached the part that he was consuming and issued a self-destruct that was followed by Hive's own self-destruct, atomizing the G-Mutant to the point of no return. Now, the G-Virus is one of the most terrifying viruses in the whole of Resident Evil canon, with procedures following a G-infection to essentially be nuke the location from orbit, as its mutation ability is unmatched throughout the rest of the series. And this was in part because of the development of Resident Evil 2, as the game director, Hideki Kamiya, wanted to bring back the tyrant from the first game, but have it be complete this time. Though this left concerns with members of the game's staff, as his appearance would almost nullify the point of the G-Virus and almost overshadow it. This meant that he would only appear in B scenarios as Mr. X, and was specifically sent to recover G. Along with this, Birkin's rapid growth as boss fights throughout the entirety of the story definitely came off as the larger threat of the two, and he wasn't even the complete one. The remake even went so far to have Birkin completely decimate the tyrant in a single strike. And though once fully infected with G, the process is seemingly irreversible. But if caught early enough, there is a vaccine that was created that can combat the evolution of G in the body. This being called the Devil Vaccine, created by Birkin as a last case emergency in case G ever got out of control. The name Devil was done so because Birkin believed that G would help humanity ascend into godhood. Which also, there's actually a pretty interesting thing about the G-Virus. The G in G-Virus is capitalized like the G in God, where the T in T-Virus is a lowercase t. Also, in the case of Sherry Birkin, who was infected with the G-Virus and treated with Devil, she still felt the mutated side effects of G, but only resulted in her gaining a superhuman healing fact. Also, her aging seemed to have slowed significantly, as seen in Resident Evil 6 which just shows how fast G can spread through the body. Also, the G-Virus and its appearance throughout the whole of Resident Evil 2 seems to be in reference to a few different horror movies. First, of course, being Alien, specifically the Chest Bursters, as in a scene where William Birkin seeks out his daughter, he encounters the police chief Irons and implants a G parasite in his body. Though, when Claire arrives shortly after, Irons' gut is being torn up and eventually the G parasite bursts out from his body like the Chest Bursters in Alien. Then, of course, you have Based on its constantly evolving nature, its need to infect and reproduce, and the weird biomass appearance that it takes on, I feel that William Birkin's G-forms are all in reference to one of the most terrifying monsters in cinema, The Thing. Though the same logic applies to all the G-mutants that Birkin creates and spreads throughout the entirety of the city. Also, The Thing and Birkin are both taken out in their final forms via a massive explosion. William Birkin is my personal favorite character in all of Resident Evil. His whole involvement with the series, and the more important he becomes as each game expands on its lore, is something that I took a lot of enjoyment in. Along with that, Birkin fits the theme of Resident Evil's major players all being some sort of super talented individual wrapped up in the same global conspiracy that is Umbrella. Plus, his almost gleefully evil nature at times, and his crazy obsession with his work makes him such a fun and impactful character for just another lab coat grunt. Also, his impact as the massive G-mutant who stalks the player really left an impression on me, and it would appear that Capcom also agrees with me on this front as we have returned to the same scenario multiple times in future games in the Resident Evil series. And hopefully, this video helped you appreciate him just a little bit more. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to infect yourself with the G-Virus, well, I hear you can get a sample of it via copies of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist, at buyshimonetta.com. Just don't tell Birkin about it.